day. Kindly follow me on my Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you! In this video, pag-uusapan natin ang last lesson sa second quarter ng grade 8 mathematics and that is about proof. Pag-uusapan din natin dito ang dalawang laws of deductive reasoning. The first is the law of detachment and the second one is the law of syllogism. Meron din tayong dalawang uri ng proof. The first is the direct proof and the next is the indirect proof. So, simulan na natin. Reasoning is a logical way of thinking. Sometimes you base your reasoning from different data gathered or from the given arguments. To reason out means to give conclusion or proof to establish a fact or the, or the truth of a statement. Okay, pag-usapan muna natin ang dalawang types ng reasoning. First is inductive reasoning. Kapag sinabing inductive reasoning, it is the process of arriving at a conclusion based on a set of observations. So sa inductive reasoning, nafoform natin ang conclusion gamit ang iba-ibang uri ng observation. Kapag naman sinabing deductive reasoning, it is the process of arriving at a, at a conclusion that uses facts, definitions, and accepted properties in a logical order to write logical arguments. So, sa deductive reasoning, gumagamit tayo ng mga facts, definitions, para makahanap tayo or mag-proceed tayo sa conclusion. Logical argument includes at least one premise and a conclusion. The premise must be valid to have a valid conclusion. So, ano nga ba ang premise? Kapag sinabing premise, it, it, it is a statement that an argument claims will induce or justify a conclusion. Premise, it is an assumption that something is true. So, kapag sinabing premise, iyon yung assumption or ina-assume natin na ang given statement ay true. Kapag naman sinabing conclusion, it is a judgment or decision reached by reasoning. Kung ang premise ay assumption or educational guess or hula, na ang isang statement ay true, ang conclusion naman, hindi dapat ito maging hula. Kailangan ito na yung proper judgment na or statement na makukuha natin base doon sa ating mga evidences or premise. There are two laws of deductive reasoning to consider and those laws are law of detachment and law of syllogism. So, pag-usapan natin ang law of detachment at law of syllogism. Doon muna tayo sa law of detachment. If P implies Q is a true conditional statement, then P is true and Q is true. So, dito sa law of detachment, meron tayong given na conditional statement, yung if-then statement, and then kailangan kapag dinetach natin sila, or pinaghiwalay natin yung statement na P at statement na Q, pareho silang true. Let's have the given example. Number 1, if CJ will not study his module in math a day before the test, then he will not get a good score. So, ito yung ating given na conditional statement na, or yung ating if-then statement. So, kailangan i-detach natin sila or paghiwalayin yung P at Q. Yung P natin, iyon yung premise at ang Q naman, iyon yung ating conclusion. So, dito sa ating given conditional statement, i-assume natin or ang premise natin ay CJ will not study his module in math a day before the test. That is the P. And he will not get a good score. Ito yung ating Q or yung ating magiging conclusion mamaya. So, yung ating premise or assumption Using the conditional statement, CJ did not study his module in math a day before the test. So, ang premise natin or in natin na si CJ ay hindi inaral ang module niya isang araw bago ang exam. So, iyon yung ating premise or assumption. So, ano yung conclusion niya or judgment? The conclusion, therefore, he will not get a good score in a test. So, again, ang premise, in natin na hindi nag-aral si CJ ng kanyang module sa math. And then, ang, ang conclusion natin, hindi siya makakuha ng magandang score sa test.
Second example, if n is an odd number, then the remainder is 1 when divided by 2. n is an odd number, iyon yung ating p, at the remainder is 1 when divided by 2, iyon naman yung ating q. So, ano nga ba yung ating premise? Ang premise ay magkagaling dito sa ating p. So, for the premise, 17 is an odd number. So, na, meron tayong assumption, assumption sorry, or in natin na ang sinasabing n or odd number is 17. Sabi dyan, 17 is an odd number. So, ano yung conclusion niya? Conclusion, therefore, 17 has a remainder of 1 when divided by 2. So, yung ating in-assume uh, in na 17, which is the odd number, ay may remainder na 1 kapag dinivide sa 2. So, that is true. Third example, if the two integers are odd, then the sum is even number. The two integers are odd, iyon yung ating p, at ang the sum is even number, iyon naman yung ating q. Premise or assumption, or i-assume natin yung given um, statement, the numbers x and y are odd numbers. So let us assume that the numbers represented by the variables x and y ay yung mga odd numbers. So ang ating conclusion, therefore, the sum of x and y is an even number. So kung ang dalawang odd numbers ay pinag-add, therefore ang kanilang sum ay even number. Okay, next is the law of syllogism. If P implies Q and Q implies R are true conditional statements, then P implies R is true. So let's have now the example. If Joy visits Bicol, then she will spend a day in Albay. If she will stay a day in Albay, then she will go Kagsawa Ruins. So, dito meron tayong dalawang conditional statements or dalawang if-then statements. So, yung unang uh, conditional statement, iyon yung ating tatawaging major premise. At yung pangalawa naman na conditional statement, iyon yung ating minor premise. Kung kanina sa law of detachment, meron lang tayong isang premise at isang conclusion, dito sa law of syllogism, meron tayong dalawang premises at isang conclusion. So, those are the letters P, Q, and then yung R, iyon yung magre-represent sa conclusion. So, dun muna tayo sa P. Kapag sinabing P, iyon yung premise or assumption. Yung P natin, Joy visited Bicol. So, dito, in na natin na si Joy ay bumisita sa Bicol. So, yung pangalawang premise naman, or yung minor premise, sorry, or Q, she will stay a day in Albay. So, in natin na mag stay siya ng isang araw sa Albay. So, ano yung ating conclusion? Or, therefore, she will visit Kagsawa Rubens. So, yung ating conclusion, hindi na siya assume or hindi na siya assumption. Yung ating conclusion nakuha natin dun sa dalawang premise. So, therefore, ang ating given conditional statements are valid. Second example, if you eat vegetable, then you become healthy. If you become healthy, then you will not get sick. Yung una nating if uh, conditional statement, that is the major premise, at yung pangalawa naman, that is the minor premise, again, kailangan nating i-assume or mag, kailangan nating magkaroon ng dalawang premises. First premise, you eat vegetable. So, in natin na kumakain kayo ng vegetable. Second premise, you become healthy. Therefore, gamit yung dalawa nating premises, our, conc our conclusion will be, you will not get sick. So, since valid or true yung ating dalawang premises, ganun din na yung ating conclusion. Therefore, this given statement is valid. Third example, if it is winter, then you will wear a wool sweater. If you wear a wool sweater, then you are a sheep. Yung una nating um, if-then statement, iyon yung ating major premise. At yung pangalawa, pangalawa, iyon yung ating minor premise. So, P, or unang assumption, it is winter. So, in natin na winter ang season ngayon. And then, yung pangalawang premise, you will wear a wool sweater. So, in natin na isusuot nyo or magsusuot kayo ng wool sweater or makapal na jacket. So, for our conclusion, you are a sheep. 
So, yung ating conclusion ay binasa natin sa dalawang premise. Yung ating you are a sheep, ibig sabihin kapag nagsuot ka ba daw ng makapal na jacket, ikaw ba ay isang tupa? So, that is invalid. Meaning, hindi ka iko consider as sheep or tupa kung magsusuot ka ng makapal na sweater. To establish the validity and truthfulness of arguments is the process of proving. So, dito na tayo sa proving. There are two ways of writing a proof. Una is yung direct and yung pangalawa naman ay indirect way of proving. So, we have the direct proof and the indirect proof. Pag-usapan muna natin ang direct proof. Direct proof is used to prove statements of the form if P, then Q, or P implies Q, which we can write as this one. Okay, so that is read as P implies Q. This method takes an original statement P, which is assumed to be true, and is used to show directly that the other statement Q is also true. The direct proof has to follow these steps. First, assume the statement P is true, and the second step, use what we know about P and other facts as necessary to deduce that another, uh, another statement Q is true. That is show P implies Q is true. So again, i-assume natin or kailangan natin i-assume muna na ang P o ang unang statement ay true. And then maghahanap tayo ng iba-ibang facts or um, evidences na magpapatunay na true yung P at iyon yung ating magiging conclusion or Q. So, let's now have the example. If N is an odd integer, then N squared is odd. We have the given P, N is an odd number. And, kailangan nating i-prove yung Q, which is N squared is odd. So, kailangan maghanap tayo ng different evidences or facts Tungkol sa P or N is an odd number para mapatunayan natin or ma-prove natin na N squared is odd number. So, kailangan natin gumamit ng dalawang column or two column proof. Yung unang column, iyon yung statements and yung reasons, iyon yung sa pangalawang um, column. So, sa unang statement, isulat natin yung given. N is an odd number and then yung reason natin, that is the given. Okay, next is... Kailangan natin maghanap ng different facts or iba-ibang iba -ibang facts para mapatunayan natin na n squared is odd or true yung ating given conclusion. So, isulat natin 2n plus 1. And then, sa reason, that is the definition of odd number. So, paano nga ba naging definition of odd number yung 2n plus 1? Let us assume that n is 1. Since ang 1 ay odd number, or isa sa mga halimbawa ng odd number, so i-substitute natin yung 1 sa n. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So, ibig sabihin, anumang number na i-add natin, or uh, sorry, anumang number na i-substitute natin sa n, and then kapag sinold natin, that is always result, or always resulting to the odd number. So, meaning 2n plus 1 is the definition of odd number. Next. Um, i-substitute natin yung n squared or yung nakuha natin kanina na definition ng odd number, n squared equals 2n plus 1 quantity squared. So, yung n natin kanina or yung nakuha natin definition ng odd number which is 2n plus 1 ay in-square natin katulad ng n squared so that the reason is squaring an odd number. So, kapag in-square ba na natin ang 2n plus 1 that is odd number, so, let us um, check later. Okay, next is n squared equals 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. So, usan natin nakuha yung 4n squared plus 4n plus 1? That is using the rule of square of a binomial. Kapag in-apply natin sa 2n plus 1 quantity squared ang ating square of a binomial o yung rules natin doon, ito yung magiging product. Okay, next, n squared equals... 2 times the quantity of 2n squared plus 2n plus 1. So, kung mapapansin nyo, naglabas tayo ng number 2 doon sa open and close parentheses. So, that is called as factoring the GCF. Since my GCF ang 4n squared at 4n, 
na 2. So, pinactor out natin yung 2 because 2 times 2 n squared is 4 n squared and 2 times 2 n is 4 n. Okay. So, next is n squared equals 2 m plus 1. That is the definition of odd number. So, pa saan natin nakuha yung m? Yung 2n squared plus 2n, inassume natin or pinalita natin siya as the variable m. So, ibig sabihin, yung value natin dito kanina ay naging 2m plus 1. Wherein, equal siya sa n squared. And then, yung 2m plus 1, kung mapapansin nyo sa pangalawa nating line, e yun ay katulad lang din ng 2n plus 1, which is the definition of odd number. Therefore, n squared is equal to 2m plus 1 is odd by definition of odd number. Second example, if a and b are even numbers, then the sum of a and b is even. So, we have the given p, two, in, two even numbers a and b. And then, kailangan nating i-prove that the sum of a and b is even. So, uh, gumamit ulit tayo ng dalawang column, statements and reasons. So, yung una nating statement, A and B are even numbers at iyon yung ating given. Next, A is equal to 2M and B is equal to 2P. So, in natin na yung A ay katulad din or equivalent ng 2M at ang B naman ay equivalent ng 2P. So, for the reason that is the definition of even number. So, paano nga ba naging even number or definition ng even number ang 2M at 2P? Let us assume that M is equal to 1. So, 2 times 1 is 2. Kung ang M naman ay equal sa 2, 2 times 2 is 4, which is also even number. So, ito yung ating formula for the definition of even number. Kung kanina sa add number, meron tayong plus 1. Dito sa even number, inalis natin yung plus 1. Okay. Third statement, A plus B is equal to 2M plus 2P. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung A dito ay may equivalent na 2M at ang B naman ay may equivalent na 2P. So kapag inat natin yung A at B, iyon ay katulad lang ng pag-aad ng 2M at 2P. Yung ating race, uh, reason that is adding 2 integers. Next, A plus B is equal to 2 times the quantity of M plus P. Kung mapapansin nyo, nag uh, napunta sa labas ng parenthesis ang 2. So, ano yung reason natin? That is factoring the GCF or greatest common factor. Since my greatest common factor na 2, ang 2M at 2P, so inilagay natin yun sa labas ng parenthesis. Because 2 times M is 2M, and 2 times positive P is positive 2P. Okay, next, A plus B is equal to 2X. Yung ating binomial na m plus p ay pinalitan natin ng x, which is, so let x is equal to m plus p, which is the definition of even number. And then kung mapapansin nyo, yung 2x ay katulad lang din ng 2m at 2p, which is the definition of even number. So therefore, the sum a plus b is even by definition of even number. Next is the indirect proof. Assume that Q is false given a premise P and a conclusion Q. It is also called as proof of contradiction. So, sa direct proof, ginawa na natin true yung Q at ginamitan din natin yon or ginamit din natin yon sa statement and reasons. Dito naman sa indirect proof, kailangan natin i-assume na ang Q ay false pero kailangan magpo-proceed pa rin siya na maging true ang conclusion. At ang indirect proof ay tinatawag na proof of contradiction. So, there are steps in indirect proving. First, assume the opposite of the conclusion of the statement. The, uh, the question is, what if the conclusion is not true? So, dito sa indirect proof, gagamitin natin yung what if phrase. Second um, step, proceed as if this, uh, uh, this assumption is true to find the contradiction. The question is, how can you prove that the conclusion is false? Third step, once there is a, con a contradiction, the original statement is true. If you're not able to prove it, then the original statement is true. So, gagamit tayo ng different reasons or statements and then kapag uh, napatunayan na false yung ating contradiction, therefore yung given na original statement ay true. 
So, let's now have the example number 1. Given P or yung ating um, premise, angle A and angle B are complementary angles. Proof Q, angle B is less than 90 degrees. So, kapag sinabi natin complementary angles, alin man sa mga angles kapag pinag-plus or inad, that is always equal to 90 degrees. So, kailangan nating i-prove or patunayan na ang angle B ay mas mababa sa 90 degrees. So, let's now have the statements and reason. Yung una nating statement, angle B is greater than or equal to 90 degrees. Kung mapapansin nyo, hindi natin isinulat yung angle B is less than 90 degrees. Ito ay dahil ginawa nating um, false or kinontradict natin yung ating given which is yung complementary angle. So, dito yung angle B ginawa natin greater than or equal to 90 degrees which is kabaliktaran or contradictive ng ating less than. So, ginawa muna nating false pero kailangan mapatunayan natin na yung ating contradiction ay mali. So, for the reason, assume that the conclusion is false and that the contradiction is true. Okay. So, we have the given angle A plus angle B is equal to 90 degrees, which is the definition of the complementary angles. Next, angle B is equal to 90 degrees minus angle A. And for the reason that is solving, uh, solving for angle B by addition property of equality. So, kung mapapansin nyo, ang angle B dapat ay mas mababa sa 90 degrees. Na kung saan, yung in natin na conclusion ay greater than or equal to. So, the, con uh, the contradiction is false. Angle B cannot be greater than 90 degrees. Thus, the original statement is true. Kasi kapag greater than 90 degrees ng ating angle B, hindi na siya under ng complementary angles. Second example, given P, 3R minus 5 is not equal to 13 and prove R is not equal to 6. So, dito, pwede tayong hindi gumamit ng statement and reasons. So, uh, mag-proceed tayo sa equation, 3R minus 5 is equal to 13. Okay. So, palitan natin yung not equal sign ng equal sign and then, contradiction niya or ang contradiction ng R is not equal to 6 ay R equal 6. So, isubstitute natin yung value ng R which is 6 doon sa ating equation. So, magiging 3 times 6 minus 5 equals 13. 3 times 6 is 18 minus 5 is equal to 13. 18 minus 5 is 13. Therefore, 13 is equal to 13. Pero sabi dyan, kailangan nating i-prove na ang R ay hindi equal sa 6 para maging not equal yung 3R minus 5 sa 13. Kasi dito sa nakuha nating solution, nagbalance ang left at ang right side ng equation. Dito, sabi, hindi dapat mag equal ang left sa right side. So, kailangan nating patunayan na ang R ay not equal to 6. So, dito napatunayan natin na hindi dapat maging 6 yung ating R para hindi siya mag sa 13. So, the contradiction is false. R must not be equal to 6. Thus, the original statement is true. Okay, so let us now summarize what we have learned in this lesson. Premise is an assumption that something is true. Conclusion is a judgment or decision reached by reasoning. There are two laws of deductive reasoning. The first is the law of detachment, wherein it consists one premise and one conclusion. Kapag naman law of syllogism, it consists two premises and one conclusion. Next, Kapag sinabing direct proof, it is used to prove statements of the form if P then Q or P implies Q which we can write as like this. And indirect proof, uh, assume that Q is false given a premise P and a conclusion Q, it is also called as the proof of contradiction. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or suggestions, feel free to comment below. Enjoy learning mathematics. God bless us all.